Boys and Gits, and welcome again to Dread War Gaming. In this episode, I'm going to be finally sharing with you the Grot Tank Rhino Build Along Part 3. Now, I should explain why it's taken so bloody long to put Part 3 out, because I did sort of say this is going to be a weekly series, and then we had the virus. So, yeah, I didn't follow it up like I said I would, and I am very sorry about that. And in future, I'm going to make sure I record all parts to the series and upload them to YouTube and then release them week by week. So I've got them before I actually talk about them, because that's the safer option with me, I think. <sighs> but anyway, um, yeah, we've had lockdown and Dred's been doing lockdown live streams, which have been great. They've been a great bit of fun, but I've been breaking a lot of rules. So I won't be doing them quite the same again, but I will be actually doing a live stream this Sunday. So in two days time, you'll be able to see Dread live again. So come and join me on Sunday for my live stream. Now let's crack on with that Grop Tank. Right, so if you paid attention in the last video, you should have something like this for your hull. This is the uh, one mil one that I did. I've just filled in a few little gaps with some green stuff just to tidy it up. Um, it doesn't matter because I'm obviously going to plaster it with uh, plaster it with some um, armor. So you know, and obviously, like I said to you, you don't really need to do that, but it's handy because it's going to make it more solid for when you do put the turret in. So you can fill it with green stuff if you want, but that's fairly expensive stuff, isn't it? So I mean, it's only a small thing, but still, it's quite a lot of green stuff in there, really. Um, and you should also have some tracks. Now these are the uh, Two different types that we made so we've got one type that we did with some um, old imperial types and we've got some that we scratch built so what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to put a little bit of armor on them but we're going to talk about first of all where you should and shouldn't put armor because let's put that one out of the way for a minute you're going to have the sides obviously where the track is going to meet up so you're not going to want anything more than flat detailed armor there so what i mean by that would be there's another example there's another grot tank that we're working on you, you haven't seen this one right <laughs> this one's for a later project but the idea is is that if you've got you can have detail but it needs to be nice and flat and flush like that because you want to be able to put these up against them now as i said in the last video if you're just going to glue them on and you're not going to worry about um you know, making them like I am to have the detail on the side and stuff. It doesn't really matter because obviously you're only going to have so much of it showing, especially with these rhinos because obviously a rhino's front sit out there, it sticks off the back a bit like that. So you're only going to see that little corner. I mean, if you're going to glue it on, it's, it's really not really worth your while. I mean, you might see it around the edges here. So it's entirely up to you is what I'm saying. But just bear that in mind that on those edges... You don't want anything other than flat stuff, but across this front, you can do as much detail as you like. On these sides, go go hell for leather. Do as much as you want. But then, just up here on this top piece, you've got to be careful because we're going to have a turret set on here. So this has to be, again, flat detail um, across the top because you're going to have a turret that's going to sit on there and it's going to want to pivot around. And it's not going to be able to do that if you've got stuff in the way. So... Yeah, just bear that in mind. In fact, look, I'll just, um, very briefly, I'll just, with a pen, just, you know, I'll put an X on the edges that you really don't want to put anything too flat. I mean, that you do want things flat, you know? So, uh, that's about it on there, and there. But other than those few markings, you are pretty safe to roll around as much as you want, okay? So, have some fun with it. And... If you want to know how Dredd does his uh, orc armor pieces, then check out this video up here in the corner, which I made specifically to be a prop to this video. So it's to help people in this series that I made that video almost, so I could just point it out to you. So I suggest you get cracking on that, and you should end up with... Oh, here's one I made earlier. So this is a side piece for... Uh, it is actually for this this one. Um, so this is the one mil one. So there's our side piece. I've just detailed it up with a door. This is from Ramshackle Games, and that's just a piece of bent tubing just to extend it out. Got a little detail on there. It's got his uh, fuel. 
some oh, let's see if we can, yeah we've got some teeth on the back so uh, i haven't detailed this side piece because i didn't see the point there is really little point uh because i am going to glue this one straight on um with the other one though because that's being cast i am not going to do that so i'm going to be able to add in detail to the inside of the other one but yes that's basically the sort of thing you're going to try and achieve so you can um what i've done here is i've laid over our original piece which is uh like this it's already got the plastic card on there hasn't it see so all i had to do was just make another sheet another piece that was you know about the same size and then all i did was i just get your pencil all i did was just randomly with a pair of scissors just cut bits like cut it into sections yeah and then once you've got your sections you just do like I have done in my armor video up there as I told you um, just chip away at the edges and scratch it up and then you can ply them but then it, you, you know you're gonna want to miss some off if you're gonna want to put little detaily bits on that like that and as for the hole I'll show you what I've been playing around with the hole because we did a 0.5 version didn't we with that we didn't see that right <laughs> so I've got one side left to do, and this is the one I'm going to work on with you guys now. But I've already done a bit of detailing on the top. This is the one I'm going to send to be cast. So I've drilled two holes in the front there, and I've sort of surrounded them with a little, nice little sleeve. That's for magnets for a ram, because as I told you, I'm going to do a demolisher ram for this one. Um, and that circle there on the front is supposed to be in the middle, but it's not quite perfect. Um, that is going to be for the demolisher cannon. So I've made one there that's got the checkered pattern on it and a bit of patchwork. I've no rivets yet, don't forget. We've got no rivets on this thing yet. That's gonna be a uh, finishing detail at the end. So that's its demolisher cannon, or one of them. I made a second one too. I'll probably make a set of three of them, I suppose. This one's got the triangles and it's got a little support bracket underneath. But yeah, they're gonna sit there. Nicey nice. And then I've also got these two holes at the top here. Now, I don't really know why I did them. I don't think I'm going to put magnets in there. They're there so that people have got the option to do things if they want to, if they want to be imaginative. But it's just going to get in the way of a turret if they were any larger. So I've kept them fairly flush, you know. I know that a turret sat in there is not going to, not going to rub on those because you're always going to have a slight, well, depends how you do it. I know I'm going to have a little bit of a, a rise, so it won't, it won't touch on that. But yeah. I started detailing even the bottom as it goes. Um, looks a bit naff at the moment, but once we've uh, some rivets on there, it'll tidy that up and some gap filling and stuff. Um, the back door, it's all sparkly and bedangly, but if you uh, just imagine that we're only using the shapes here. We're not worried about how they look um, at the moment because we're going to paint over them. And these diamantes have got a really nice flat um, edge on them. So it looks like if the door drops down, they become the supports. So that's the idea. It's supposed to be just hinged. I didn't make proper hinges. I just literally just scored into the into a piece of plastic card there. That's all I did. I mean, it's so small. Don't want to go over the top. On this side, I did a little attempt on the um, on the sort of battle damaged. I, I suppose this is part of the hydraulic system inside that opens this door down, I suppose, is what I was trying to represent there. But I didn't do a perfect job on it. It's all right, though, isn't it? So yeah, this is basically what we're we're gonna do now. So we're gonna do another side on this tank. So first things first, um, I need to get a another piece of card about that sort of size. So what I will do, find the correct sizing. What have we got here? What have we got here? This one. That'll do. Right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna put it down like this, and I'm gonna draw around it because this thing has sort of increased in size a little bit. And I want to cover up these edge joins. You see, see here around this edge. That's not going to look pretty if I leave it like that. It's going to show. So, same as what I've done on this side. I've brought the armor panels up to the edge. So, I'm going to do that here by drawing around that, and then cutting it out. And then I will be able to trim it back and make sure it's a nice snug fit. Once it is a nice snug fit, I'm going to do the same as what I said with the tracks and. Draw your little lines across it, cut it all up, higgledy piggledy, and put it back together again. And maybe miss the odd piece out and replace it. Use it as a template. See, like this piece here, or this piece here. I cut them out, 
of the normal plastic card, but then I used the piece that I didn't want to use as a template to cut out a piece of textured card. Just a nice little easy peasy thing to do, and I will show you that now. So, holding it firmly down, just going to draw around it lightly, or as accurately as I possibly can. Now I know it comes around there, but it's not going to have that height there, it's going to be a bit shorter. This is where you start needing to use a bit of thinking, but it's not it's not as technical as it was to start with, really, because we're not doing as much measuring um, as we were before. This is, you know, when you come to armour, it's a lot more, uh, especially for orcs, it's a lot more ragtag anyway. So the only reason I'm being quite as precise as I am really is because I'm intending to cast this, as you well know. So there we are. There's our shape. Pretty rough, but I know very well that... Gotcha. Yeah, I don't want that bit there. So I'm, that line there's got to carry on across. Like that. And that's probably going to be straight up like that. Cut that one across there. Just, I'm just thickening these up so they're a bit straighter so I can just see where I'm cutting. Nice. Don't know why it's got a bit of a curvature there. Shouldn't really have. Right, yeah. I'm going to cut that out. And then, oh, actually, I'll even draw on it some squigs. So, some squiggly lines. So, we'll have one across there. One down there, uh, one that makes it there. Um, put one across. Nah, I don't like that. Um, one straight across there, then one down there. Sort of that, something like that, you know? Right, so I'm just going to use my ruler and my scriber. I what it's called then for a minute. Right, straight down there. Such a cool tool. Um, seriously, if you ain't got a, if you don't have a Tamiya plastic scriber, get yourself one. Head on over to Hobby Mad. Check out the uh, link in my description there. Um, actually, Steve O's just told me I need to uh, need to adjust that link because I've put, forgot to put the HTTPS thing on the beginning. Um, but I'll do that before I put the video out, so you won't even notice. You won't even notice. Right, across there. And let's do it down there. So I've just got to cut out this bit here now. <clears throat> right, so there we go. And to be honest with you, at this stage now, right, it isn't even going to hurt if you want to use a pair of scissors, to be honest with you. It's just as easy. So we've got our nice shape. Just make sure that it's sort of... Uh, Lines up all right. All right, it's not too bad. The corner's a bit big up there, it's all right. So we can trim that down. That doesn't really cover there very well, though, does it? Mm. This way, you get to do a bit of adjustment and stuff if you want. Huh? It's not so bad, yeah. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it up, and um, when it comes to sort of one of the when it comes to one of the sort of like take off edges, I'm gonna wait until I've got it all cut to pieces first and jigsaw it on there and see which bits hang off particularly because in the process of um, chipping the armor panels, I quite often will um, damage the edge as you will see in, in the video if you go and check it out on the armor paneling. Um, and that's gonna make it shrink a little bit anyway, not massively, but a little bit. So, you know, you've got to bear that in mind. So. Being just slightly, marginally too large is better than being a little bit too small. So, yes. So I'm going to use the scissors and I'm going to cut this out. And then we're going to go from there. So, uh, I should actually remember where they go. Be handy, wouldn't it? So, this is this is the only jigsaw, uh, the thing that when it comes to jigsawing, I need to make sure I've got it the right way around and stuff. Jesus, I've already lost it. Look, there you go, that one goes there. I should have drawn it this way around because this is the way it's going to go. But like I said, they're random cuts anyway, so who cares? Um, I'm going to go for one there, maybe. Why not? Boom. Done. Just put that down that way so we know which way around that one went. And then this one, I'm probably going to go on that line there. That's, yeah, a bit. 
And then this one, I think we're just going to squares. That's the front one. And then this one, go there. Just cut that there. Okay. Now, to make this jigsaw work, you really don't want to lose kind of where they went as such. So when you come to work on each one for armor paneling it and chipping it up, just remove one at a time, take it away, work on it with your knife, and then, you know, put it back in its place and pick the next one up. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now what I'm just doing is I'm just marking on the tops of them just so I know which is the top, you know, <laughs> just so. so a little bit easier once I start working on them, start flipping around in my hand and then I won't know where I started from. So take that one away, like I said. And we're gonna start wearing it. Oh, this is very difficult across a camera like this. Oh, ho, 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 I can't Let's see what I'm doing. So I can feel what I'm doing. I can see it on the screen. I just, just don't feel right. All right. So basically what I mean is once you finish tipping that one up, you're gonna put it back down like that. And then you're gonna pick the next one up. Like, oh, <laughs> both of them, like this. <laughs> and then you're gonna work on this one. Then you're gonna put it back down. And then you're gonna pick up the next one. Once you've got them all done, yeah, then you're gonna apply them to the side. And you're gonna end up with something like that. Super duper. I don't think you need me to uh, drag this out too much, really, do you? You know what I'm saying. So in the next episode, once you've covered your basic shape in some armor we're going to get into the real juicy bit we're going to start making ourselves a turret we're going to start making ourselves some demolisher cannon fronts if you want to do that and a few little detaily bits you know nice add-ons so one example i've got is i did want to do a whirlwind so i've actually made a blanking plate don't look very pretty on the bottom does it see don't matter though does it it's got arrows just so i can work out that that's the front so the idea is, is on this plate here is I'm going to have a, a whirlwind um, turret. So that the thing with all the uh, rockets. So um, yeah, that's basically just for that. So it's just so I can take the tank turret off and put that on instead. So yeah, come back to me in the next episode and we will discuss tank turrets and fine details and rivets. And that'll be job done. See you in the next one, guys.